Okay, great. Good to be with all of you this morning. Uh, thank you for those wonderful introductions and comments. And Kathleen and I have already been juicing it up in the back, uh, and so we've got a plan here. I guess yeah. the, the, the big question I want to start with is, are you an activist that just happens to act, or are you an mm. actress that found activism? Well, certainly the activism preceded uh, the, the celebrity. Huh? That um, my father was a foreign service officer, and I grew up in a tradition, basically, that we do serve, and even overseas, uh, as representatives of our country's government, we, my mother and my siblings and myself, would always volunteer uh, in Venezuela at an orthopedic hospital uh, in London at a clinic. Um, so that has always, but at the same time, you see, I was always going to be an actor. Always. always. So they, they were, they were blended. Yeah. When you, you know, I, I was thinking about this and, and the long list of uh, activists that, that our friend just uh, mentioned, yeah. all tend to be wrapped around progressive causes. And I'm interested in what happens when you run into John Voight. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, one thing, I turned down working with him. <laughs> um, wow. I tell you, you know, I simply, I don't, I don't believe, and this is where I think we've lost, we've gone off track a lot in our country. I don't believe that everyone has to believe as I do. Uh, I, it is not my place to educate them or enforce them or do anything else. It is my right to try and persuade mm -hmm. to by example or by, you know, by reason. Um, but if they disagree, it, uh, it's not a judgment call. They're not better or worse than me. They're not right or wrong. Well, I don't know about yeah. that. <laughs> You know, I think it's interesting because one of the, the themes that we've been exploring in this series that we call We the People is the ability to have those debates and discussions. But at the end of the day, after the fight was fought, uh, if you come back together, remember you're, you're basically under the same tent, on the same boat. And so I am yeah. interested in this question of how you see your rivals, maybe <coughs> acting rivals, maybe, uh, 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 maybe acting rivals is the wrong way to put it, but political rivals, policy rivals, people who are trying to work for a different country than you're working for? Oh, tough, 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 tough question. Uh, it is very hard for me to understand why people feel the need to impose their beliefs on others. Uh, I, I, it's sort of a blind spot, I suppose, in my, in my brain. I just don't understand why they feel the need to, to what is the word, proselytize? Mm -hmm. huh? that, um, and it, this nation was surely founded on a freedom of speech, on freedom of religion, on uh, the right to pursue your career and your beliefs as, as you believed. Uh, and anything outside of that, I do not understand. So when, when you encounter, when I encounter someone who will say, you know, that that a woman's right to choose what she should do, be doing with her body is uh, a moral or evangelical or religious issue. Um, first of all, it's almost invariably that they are male, mm -hmm. <laughs> which loses my respect immediately. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, but I don't understand what basis they have to speak on. Um, so it's, it's difficult, I suppose I try and remind them more than anything that is, is my right to think differently. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking um, when we hope you met to sort of look at your next productions that you might do down the road and if HBO came to you and offered a, you know, pr pretty good set of Cartier watches or something for playing Phyllis Schlafly or Anita Bryant. Would you do it? <laughs> now, this came up, I was here in Washington doing... Oh, somebody asked that question? Something like it. Yeah, we were doing... I thought it was completely original. Doing, <laughs> no, I was doing Molly Ivins. You know, it was uh -huh. a wonderful, liberal, right, Texas... Right. Oh, fighting comedian, political writer. In any case, and someone said, now this was uh, four years ago, so someone said, well, would you be able to do Sarah Palin? And I said, 
No. No, I really, I, I mean, acting is not pretending. Right. You know, I really have to have a basis of belief in what I, in what I do, and I just, I, I would, that would, I would be a very bad actor in that role. You know, next Tuesday, I love the fact that we're doing this, and we're just what five days away from uh, one of the biggest choices in the country, right? It's, yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, I, I had, when you're up there acting on stage, you say, "Wow, Tuesday's deal." I know you've already voted, but yeah. what do you think is going on in the country? I mean, you've been trying to channel the soul of this country and the soul of relationships and the soul of you know this the, you know the, 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 the various efforts to dominate and control women what do you think is going on in the country hmm. i want to start by saying that i i believe i believe that americans are inherently good and that we will do the right thing i really do believe that um as to the control, I think, and this has become clearer now than at any time, I think, in our history, that it is the fear of, of primarily white men who are losing a power base or losing what they feel to be their power. Uh, and it is their ability, I mean, the, traditionally, the men have in this country been the patriarchal societal uh, controllers of women, yeah? Um, and that they were able to do that before there was the science mm. to enable us to control our own bodies. Uh, now that that is no longer true, then they must uh, find another way to dominate. And I believe that this is essentially fear. Mm. It is fearfulness. If they don't control women, then who do they control? Oh, gee. Maybe responsible for themselves. That's a tough one. Let's talk about celebrities. But I love men. <laughs> I had to say that, sorry. Um, we're going to talk about celebrities just as a class, because one of the questions that often comes up, and, and I think it was laid out, is that some people love celebrities jumping in and sponsoring things. I had, and this is this is on the record, uh, uh, but I had a conversation that she shared with me more once, and when she was still with Ashton Kutcher, they were going through, and she asked me and talked to me about what sorts of causes that were out there that that I thought they might attach themselves to. What? I'm, I'm not kidding. And and uh, the one that they were leaning towards at the time, and I don't have, was looking at uh, women that were um, victims of sexual and, and human trafficking uh, and working on that. And I do think that to be more went in that direction finally. But. It's, it's a different formula than I think you brought to the table, saying that you have these core concerns. And I'm interested in the industry of celebrityism. Is, is there an, uh, a group of consultants that help celebrities find the cause they're for? I have absolutely no idea. But, um, no, I am, I am, I am practical. I am, I'm very practical. I mean, I was first drawn, and always drawn, to uh, women's health. That right. really became the, my most driving thing when I first moved back to the United States when I was 18 and started um, college at the University of Maryland, Southwest Missouri State uh, in Springfield, Missouri. And it was, I mean, at that time I had no money and my father had just died and we were really truly cut loose in every way. Um, and so I went to the Planned Parent Clinic in Springfield, Missouri to get the health care that I needed and for which I have I have felt indebted and and knowing how what that did for me, how that saved me uh, then when I had no resources. Uh, I will continue to fight that fight uh, without pause. But when I when I started on People for the American Way about thirty one years ago, that I kind of predate celebrity, huh? Um, that is freedom of speech, protection right. of the First Amendment, and watchdog of the religious rights. That is our mandate. Uh, then I live in New York City, so I am on the board of City Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. and we now feed over 19,000 people a year, over 2 million meals a year, and, uh, and it's growing, right. you know. But these are all programs where I can show up and be part of. I can stand in front of that capital. I can open a clinic. You, know, you, you have a wonderful new yeah. clinic here on 4th Street Northeast. And you won't open it what month? 
Oh, we says last month. Yeah, yeah, since last month we opened it. Um, it's very nice. Bravo. Anyway, uh, city meals on wheels. I can I literally carry meals. Um, one of my rules mm. is that my name does not appear on any invitation at which I am not present. Mm. Mm. So even if it's one of my organizations, if it says Kathleen Turner, then Kathleen Turner is there. If I am not and cannot, then my name is not on it. Mm. That's my basic rule. That, that's fascinating. So uh, to, to, I want to make very clear the audience of the meeting more. I, I sort of admire the fact that someone who might not have a cause was nonetheless trying to find where their presence could move the needle on something important. And I, and I sort of fought her earnest interest in what were the big gaps, because there are also they're, they're sort of safe causes and unsafe ones. They're ones that, like we were but talking about the risks. Yeah. yeah, so tell us a little bit about that. I mean, just t share with us how you feel your industry is doing. Ah, well, in fact, I think there are some very good uh, people out there working. I think you mentioned Matt Damon for education. Water and education. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, Ben, um, oh, I'm so bad with names. Africa. Yes, <laughs> what he's doing uh, in Africa is valuable. Um, yes, uh -huh. and, but these are, again, yeah, these are hands-on people. Yeah, they show up and they do the work. What kind of risks have you taken in your in your high profile with Planned Parenthood? There have been. There have been. After the Boston bombings, the clinic bombings, there I went up to help with the services and the, the memorials and everything. And I received many death threats. Uh, my mother, God bless her, uh, you know, wrote me and begged me to stop that she had received threats that uh, sent to her you know, that say goodbye to your daughter stuff. Um, so she was very, that, that bothered me more than any threat to myself. You know, leave my mom out of it, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> or out of there, now I'll get you, you know. But, uh, I, I've worried uh, about the effect on my daughter, but my daughter is a grown woman now and tells me that's none of my business. <laughs> she apparently doesn't like it when you talk about sex. Well, of course not. Yeah. No, 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 she always closed her eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if, if you read about Kathy Turner, some of the most wonderful vignettes are what you've revealed about your conversations with your daughter about various things you say about your various urges, and, you, and your daughter apparently goes, goes crazy. Yeah, well, this one, the play I'm doing now at Arena Stage is um, the Year of Magical Thinking, and it's Tom Dinian's work on on the on grief on on yeah. the understanding of grief and loss in your life and so my daughter comes to opening my daughter comes to every opening and she went backstage and she said you know mom one of these days would you do a play where your kid doesn't die <laughs> <laughs> I said, 